How's it going hockey fans? My name is Zach and welcome to my very first game recap video. Today we're going to be talking about the Montreal Canadiens versus the New York Islanders in a heartbreaking 2-1 loss for Montreal. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce myself. I am a hockey fan, but above all, I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan. Uh, it's been a tough season for us and I didn't get to start this earlier in the season because I just now got my camera. But from now on, I'm going to be trying to make a video after almost every single game. Obviously, I can't watch them all. But the ones that I do, I will watch them and, uh, and put a little reaction here afterwards. The way I'm going to format these videos is first and foremost, I'm going to be talking about each of the periods very shortly, very briefly. Uh, talk about the goals, talk about the outcome. And then I'm going to go into my most overwhelming and underperforming players of the game for both sides. And let's jump right into this. The first off, the very first period, was a rough one for the Montreal Canadiens. We couldn't get anything going, very low traffic shots, very low scoring opportunities in general. We just couldn't get the puck moving, couldn't get the puck flowing. But Carey Price absolutely stood on his head, absolutely robbing the Islanders of a couple sure goals early in the game, really kept us in there to get us through to a 0-0 end of the first after the Islanders almost doubled our shots. The second period was a little bit different with uh, two goals coming from two defenders on each side. One from Adam Pellick and the other one from Jordy Ben. Jordy Ben's shot was just a nice hard low shot from the point. Lots of traffic out front. Poor Grease never stood a chance actually saving the puck. Pellick, uh, we gave him way too much time with it in the, in the high slot area. He took his time. He could get a good shot off and Price again had no chance to stop the puck. Uh, too many people out front. Price's body was he was in the right area, but not quite because he was just able to slide the puck past him. And the period ended in a 1-1 tie. The third period is where the absolute backbreaker happened. In the last dying minutes of the game, we gave away a terrible 2-on-1 with Brett Kulak with a really puzzling decision to give a little drop to Max Domi that had no idea the puck was even coming to him. Out breaks Matthew Barzell. You can't give the guy any time. Max Domi loses his footing. Brett Kulak is way too deep in the zone because we were, for some reason, dropping the puck and going deep. Brett Kulak doesn't really use his brain very often. I'm very partial on Brett Kulak. Um, I, I'll get into that in a bit, though. Uh, you give Barzell way too much time, feeds Andrew Ladd a beautiful, uh, actually, Anders Lee? Andrew Ladd? Anders Lee? Oh. Feeds Anders Lee the puck, and there's just nothing that Price can do about it. He, he gave him way too much time, Barzell slows right down, takes his time, gives a nice feed across for a good cross cruise one-timer, and it was the backbreaker. Brett Kulak really dropped the ball on this play. Ma I don't blame Max Domi. Max Domi was cycling the puck up. He was moving his feet. And Brett Kulak just dropped in. There was, there was a, a break in communication between the two of them. Domi tried his best to, to tie the guy up. Lost his footing. Fell down to the ice. And Brett Kulak just looked stupid down near the goal line. Leaving poor old Jeff Petrie to try to defend it by himself. And he just got schooled. There's just nothing you can do about that. You give Barzell a minute, he'll take an hour, and it's just, it's unfortunate the way the game ended, but um, overall, I think the Montreal Canadiens didn't play very well. I felt they got dominated all all of the game, except for maybe the second period, we kind of gave it to them, um, but in general, we definitely struggled. It was a tough game for us, and two points that I really would have liked to come away with, at least one, at least one point. You can't make mistakes like that when you're you're fishing for points. You, you just need any point you can grab. And uh, you make a risky play like that. That really backfires for you. And uh, it definitely uh, was a backbreaker. And it sucked. So my first honorable mention. Um, I would say the player of the game. The most uh, outstanding player for the New York Islanders throughout the entire game was Devon Tays. Um, Right up until the end when Anders Lee got that really nice goal. Um, but in general, I noticed this kid flies. For a defender, he's jumping up in the offensive play. He's got a great shot. He's fast, fast, fast. He caught Paul Byron. And Paul Byron is a speedy guy. And Devontae's from a standstill, caught up to him uh, on a nice little break. And uh, I think they got a really nice 
offensive kind of two-way defender kind of sort of in uh, in Taze and it's really awesome watching him play I actually really enjoyed watching that kid handle the puck and jump up in the offensive plays he got a couple shots on net good hard shots from the point and uh, even got up for a couple closer shots because he loves to skate he loves to move the puck and he just controls the area that he's in he's strong and smart defensively uh, he's really really fast once I like or like I said and in 2017 he actually won the AHL All-Star Game for the fastest player, I believe. So, I mean, he's a speedy guy, and uh, he's a really strong defender for him, and I think he's been a piece of their, their turn this year uh, to a completely different Islanders team than we saw in the last couple of years. I didn't really notice an underperforming player for the Islanders. Uh, nobody really jumped out to me that somebody that made a whole bunch of uh, mistakes defensively, offensively, um, because of how structured they were and how well they were able to control the neutral zone and uh, take zone entries extremely smoothly uh, so there's not going to be an underwhelming player for the Islanders in this game although Islanders fans watch the game and see it completely different they may have noticed somebody that uh, to me didn't uh, stand out as somebody that did terribly um, but yeah into the Montreal Canadiens for me Jordan Wheel has been stellar I mean for the five games that he's played with us He's brought a lot of life to our power play. He takes right-handed shot, uh, face-offs, and he was actually playing center uh, for the first period with uh, Kakeniemi playing the right wing, uh, which was actually really interesting to see. Uh, seeing the left-handed shot at Kid uh, on the right wing kind of gave me that uh, the sniper vibe, which we all know he's got a great shot. So if, if we can use him on the right wing every once in a while to, to load him up for that one-timer he loves to use from uh, the, the far dot, um, I don't think it'll be too bad. I didn't notice Kotkaniemi out there too much. Uh, the third period, he was dynamite. He had a couple really good chances. He got flattened one time, got a little bit of a bloody lip. But uh, an average game from the kid. He made a couple defensive errors, but he also made a couple defensive, uh, uh, couple defensive saves. Um, so I don't think Kotkaniemi was too big of an issue. Uh, but anyway, on a Jordan wheel. He is fast. He full sends it every single shift. Shout out to Steve Dangle for that one. Uh, but he just full tilt the entire time. I love the kid out there. He was a bit of an underrated pickup. I didn't know who he was, but uh, he brings a lot to the squad, actually. And uh, he almost tipped home the uh, the Jordy Ben goal. Originally, they were talking about giving it to him because uh, it looked like he got a stick on it. But the official goal went to uh, Jordy Ben. Uh, Jordan Wheel was just right out front of the net, um, using his body, blocked off the goalie's vision, couldn't get anything. So I noticed him really controlling the center of the ice and really using his speed and and his skill to to set up plays there was one instance on the power play he was trying too hard he he was trying to cycle the puck too much he uh he ended up throwing the puck right out of the zone right in between two players and it went all the way down but that was pretty much the only major thing that i really noticed from him that uh that was like a really textbook error and, you know, he, you could even see on the camera, he hung his head in shame and he was, he was really upset about it. Uh, but overall, I saw a really good game from him. I really love what the kid brings and I can't wait to see more of him. Now, for the Montreal Canadiens, I have two underwhelming players. Um, I have Jonathan Drouin, again, and Brett Kulak for that horrible, horrible turnover. Uh, Brett Kulak frustrates me. Uh, he's a decent enough player, but he's so inconsistent. He reminds me of um, uh, not as skills gifted Jake Gardner. He makes a lot of defensive errors. He makes a lot of simple textbook errors. And uh, Jeff Petrie really has to bail him out a lot. I would not hate to see Kulak take a smaller role in the team next year if he's still around. Um, but I'm not too happy with the way that, uh, that he's performing. And, um, to me, this game really stood out as one that he kind of blew. He gave the puck straight away to Matthew Barzell, uh, in the last couple of minutes. And I think I pretty much blame that play on him. It was a rough play. It was a risky play and it was just a bad play altogether. Now, Jonathan Druin, um, Jonathan Druin only played... 
Just over three minutes of ice time in the first period, being the second lowest on either team. And by the end of the game, he only had 13 minutes of gameplay with only Kai Kanyami being under him. And uh, I think the only reason he actually picked up any kind of uh, game time is because they actually put him beside uh, Domi for a little bit. They, they moved him up. Uh, they put him on the Domi line to see if they could get a spark in him. And now he is 15 scoreless games in his last 16, I believe. It's something like that. It's something along those lines. Um, it's just not good enough. Like, Druin needs to be a consistent player. When he's on, man, is he on. He can fly. He has great zone entries. He creates space. He's got good eyes. He's got good hands. He's got a decent shot. But he's not consistent at all. And I think that's kind of what's breaking our offense right now is inconsistencies. I think Domi's been our only consistent point scorer. And um, Gallagher has been our only consistent uh, goal scorer in general. Um, I believe Domi has 15 points in his last 16 games. Something like that. Um, he's doing fantastic. And uh, he's... Giving it his all out there. In the first period, he was trying to get under Barzell's skin. But uh, I just don't see it from Druin. I did see it for a while. And Druin's had a good year. But uh, we need more from him. Especially on this team where we're kind of a bubble team. We, we need those players that are playing average, playing under what their skill cap can be. We really need them to step it up. And we really need them to bring everything they got for the last, uh, the last 11 games uh, to try to close out this season. Without Druin, I just... It leaves such a hole in our offense. We can't have Druin on our third line beside Wheeling, Kock, and Yemi. Um, also, Lekkinen. I, it's, it's no secret. I'm not a Lekkinen fan. Um, I don't see a lot from the kid when he's out there. Uh, he doesn't use the body like he should be. He doesn't... He, he just... I, I feel like he's so detached out there. He doesn't pay attention. I don't know what it is. I'm just not a huge Lekkonen fan. I like Lekkonen now more when he's on the fourth line uh, playing beside Armia and Thompson. I actually find that a, a decent enough shutdown line. I really like Nate Thompson, but um, I, I just don't see it from Lekkonen either. So that's just about going to wrap it up. Um, just really quickly, I am going to talk about uh, this channel really, really quick. I'm only going to take a second here. Um, I'm going to be posting these kind of videos more often. Not for every single game, but for most games that I watch, I'm going to put a little reaction up here. I plan on doing some stuff in the off season, and um, I plan on doing stuff all through next season. Uh, as far as quality goes, it's my very first time actually filming a video, so pardon if I'm a little bit awkward, if I'm looking away, if I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder. Uh, it's actually my first time really in front of the camera. Uh, the lighting is horrible. I don't have uh, a behind-the-camera um, light yet, nor do I have a mic. The mic is actually still on order, uh, but I just wanted to jump into it. I'm just using the light on my roof, which is why I have a shadow in front of my face, and it's awful, and I'm sorry, but I just don't have uh, a crazy budget to go and buy a bunch of stuff. I'm shooting on a, a Canon Vixia right now, uh, HF R800. It's a real cheap, real budget camera. Um, just something that I can throw up with a little tripod on it and film a little bit of a video here. If you guys have any suggestions, throw them down in the comments. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Turn on the bell for post notifications. And uh, I will see you guys in the next game. Hopefully the Canadians can win this one out. And I'd love to see them in the postseason this year. Please, God. Either that or lose them all, drop down, and try to get some uh, someone like uh, Raphael Lavoie. A nice little uh, French right winger, big kid. Anyway, uh, have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.